seafood. It's one of the towering pillars of our Australian culinary reputation. A reputation that's recognised throughout the world for its sensational taste and sizzling innovations. But there's more to great seafood than just what you see on your plate. And you're about to dive deep into the full story of how it gets there. I'm Andrew Weddinghouse. I've spent the past two decades fishing for fun on screen, yours and mine. Now I'm getting serious, teaming up with some of Australia's toughest professional fishing crews and introducing them to some of the country's most creative chefs. Together we'll sail Australian waters from east to west to show you the whole amazing journey from ocean depths to the heights of culinary delight in each delicious adventure of seafood escape. This week's escape is to the northeast coast of Victoria, where the waters of the Gippsland Lakes flow out towards the Tasman Sea. It's an area that provides a perfect habitat for about 20,000 waterbirds and attracts many thousands more tourists who come for the pristine scenery and wide range of luxury holiday accommodation. But for once, I'm not here for the recreational end of this busy marina and coastal port. I'm here for the working boats and keen to find out more about the hard yakka put in by their skippers and crews for the benefit of you and me. This is Lakes Entrance in Victoria, renowned for its amazing seafood, with a large commercial fishing fleet bringing in their prize catch daily. And this is where we start our seafood escape. I'll be putting on my wet weather gear to go out aboard the trawl and a fell as it targets the eastern whiting, which Lakes Entrance has long been famous for. I'll be working alongside skipper Darren Reggiano, better known as Reg, to see just what it takes for you and me to enjoy a sustainable, reliable supply of these sweet-eating little fish on our dinner tables. With me will be Chef Simon Tarlington. He's from Melbourne's Highline Restaurant in the Railway Hotel a young Chef of the Year finalist who has also worked at Key Restaurant in Sydney and in London. Simon is on an even steeper learning curve than I am out here, where he'll come face to face with his ingredients in their freshest, rawest state. An early start, the weather's not so great. And here we go, crossing the little bar on the way out through the entrance. Darren Reggiano has had more pre-dawn starts than the rest of us have had hot whiting dinners. Starting work while the people who will ultimately enjoy the fruits of their labours are still tucked up and cosy in bed. Just standard routine for the skippers and crews who work in this Bass Strait whiting fishery. By the time the sun breaks, they're well into their day's work. Yeah, a bit open, I guess. Yeah. 0.8 mile. Told it would be out. Nice slow place. Yeah, about 1.8 to 2 knots. 1.8 knots? That's slow, tough work, and an indication of how precise commercial fishing is in the 21st century. Well, here comes the net now. No! The two boys are going to actually pull the net in around this section here, up over the top, and that'll pull her right in nice and tight. Have a look at the seabirds out the back. Just insane. <laughs> what a sight. That's incredible, eh? So Jordan pulls her over, I think. And this is what we'll be doing in a minute, mate. <laughs> you got your muscles ready? <laughs> Whiting, here we come. This is the first of a half dozen trawls that this crew will do today. They're using a seine net in a fishing technique that's been around so long it's depicted in ancient Egyptian wall art. I wonder if those long ago fishermen attracted as much attention as this from the seabirds of their day. Tell you what, you don't want to get down too close to those birds. Hey? Yep, right up. Move out of the road. The net gear Reg and his crew use is a modern Danish seine. It's a trawling technique that limits the gear's presence on the sea floor to about a half hour for each time they shoot the net. This, along with careful navigation, to ensure they avoid reefs and run the net only along sandy bottoms, has proven by recent research to virtually eliminate any trawling damage. It's bad, isn't it? Yeah. You're whiting in one set. Yeah. Well, real mixed bag. Loads of whiting in there. Some really nice sized flathead. 
whole pile of different species. A real mixed bag of fish, but the majority of fish here are the whiting. But there's one of your whiting, and they're unusual fish because they don't grow that big. That's probably your, your average size. We're boxing those up at the moment. Hauling the net in might have been hard yakka, but the real work kicks in when that huge mass of fish has to be sorted and packed into dozens of boxes that will transport the day's catch to the markets. It's exacting work too, sorting through this amazing kaleidoscope of shapes and colours. But I'll tell you what, we've got a, a lot of whiting. Look at these whiting now. When you sort of think about sand whiting, you're often thinking about fish over 30 centimetres. Well, these ones grow up to around probably 28 or 30, it'd be quite amazing. Yeah. But uh, a 25 centimetre, 20 centimetre whiting is probably about its limit. But look at this big guy. Hey, he's a, he's a monster. You'd think after a sorting session like that, the crew would earn a chance to chill out. Well, they do. Down in the cold room, keeping the catch fresh for market means icing it down fast. And today, Chef Simon and I get to be the coolest guys aboard the good ship Nafel. The boxes just keep coming down, so the rate of ice shoveling has to keep up with the pace. And after all that, Simon and I get our turn on the net coming up. Aboard the trawl and a fell, it's time for me to go to work. Well, this time out, it's Simon and my turn to bring those nets in. So I'm going to get Wombat just here to show us how to do it. Then I'll try to get involved. And well, we're getting pretty close at the moment. It's a bit of anticipation. This is the hard work here. <laughs> do this in the restaurant, mate. Get in there. Have a look at the seals. They are just everywhere. And there, there come the big albatross trying to get their easy feed straight in. Not quite as big a haul as the first one, but for a couple of newbies, it was a muscle stretcher just the same. What about that? It was a bit hard work pulling that net in. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not as easy as it looks. I think these guys do about six or seven shots a day, hauling her in and putting her back out and then sorting through the fish. A fair bit goes on to be a commercial fisher. But back in port, that's all about to change. Well, we've just slipped back inside Lake's entrance and Simon's going to teach me a little bit about cooking whiting. So I'm looking forward to that dish. Yeah, so this is going to be uh, your new barbecue dish. Uh, I'm just going to do it over some smoking chips, nice cap caper salsa at the end. Beautiful. But before the boys in the crew and I can enjoy the lunch Simon's got planned for us, we've got more work to do. Reg docks the Nafel at the Lake's entrance Fisherman's Co-op where Simon and I are professionally supervised in the gentle art of sliding boxes of whiting down to the conveyor belt. And our reward will be getting out of the elements for a change and getting to see the first stages in the marketing process, which include filleting that makes sashimi chefs look like slowpokes. Finally back at his home dock, Reg can shut down the big diesel and hand over his deck to Simon. Now. You're going to teach me how to cook something nice and simple, a nice easy fish recipe with uh, looks like a bit of a salsa. Simon starts with the freshest possible whiting fillets. He'll cook them in a tray over apple wood chips. More flavour will come from a mix of leeks, fennel, onions, ginger, garlic and thyme, which is placed on the grill above the wood chips. We spread the vegetable mixture evenly, then place the little boneless fillets of whiting skin side down and they're ready to cook. Just fill up the plate. We've got a few hungry boys over there. All right, this is looking good. So we've got a bit of smoke starting to come through now, so the wood chips are starting to burn in the knife. So the tin foil, we'll just cover it completely. We'll check it after five minutes. Might need another five minutes. Now we're going to make a caper and apple salsa. So to start with, we've got a bit of parsley. It looks like some sweet and sour. 
Yeah, so we've got some lemons, some apple, are quite tart and sweet. Yeah. Uh, we've got some spring onions, nice and fresh. So we've got and chilli as well, some chili. garlic okay, and capers to top it off. Do you prepare this recipe at, at your restaurant? Uh, no, not this exact one. This would be something more for my friends, Barbie on the weekend. Some apple, just some fine dice. So obviously this is the sweet. Yeah, so a little bit of sweet, tart and fresh red chilli. Personal preference, if you like your food spicy and you add more chilli. If you don't, you check the fish. Just yep, will do. Oh yeah, it's just cruising along a little bit on the edges over here. Looks like it's warm on that one section. And so then we got also an echelot. Just get that on. Lemon zest, it's finely grated. And juice. I know you love working with fresh produce, and I guess the fish can't get any fresher than this. Okay. That's some white pepper. White pepper's nice with fish. Some sea salt. We've added capers they do have such a high salt content to them. Extra virgin olive oil, just to bring it all together. And the salsa's just about done. So this is nice and simple. I could do this myself, no problems at home. Wow, I reckon that's just about done. We'll feed the seagull sitting over there on the side there. Fresh salsa on those. Beautiful. Come and get it. It's a bit hot, yep. A bit warm. You'll find this recipe and a whole lot more like sustainable fishing and chef profiles on our website. And we also recommend fishfiles.com.au for further info on fishing and feasting. Well done, mate. Sensational. This is beautiful. While we filmed Seafood Escape, we stayed here at the Esplanade Resort and Spa at Lakes Entrance. Great accommodation and fantastic facilities, including a heated swimming pool, tennis court, and of course, that great day spa. Another pre-dawn start on the trawl and a fell. And I'm learning more about the trade from Skipper Reg. When you look up there, you can see the actual whole shot. Yeah. You were telling me about one of the units over here that you actually turn her on, log, log everything through the day? Yeah, that's yeah, electronic logbook over there. Everything's recorded. Well, where's it all go to? Uh, to AFMA, by camera. So back into the fisheries and they... Yeah, they can just keep an eye on what's going on. Probably the, the advantage of that is that fisheries know, you know, how the stocks are and yeah, you know, that's what right. numbers that's what it's all about. Yep. So you're looking at a sustainable fishery. That's, I guess, everybody's looking for that. Yeah. It's a morning in spring, but it's still a chilly start for deckhands Tristan and Jordan as they prepare the gear for the first trawl of what's shaping up to be a long, hard day. The up. Well, the first rays of sun have just poked its head through all that cloud out there. The boys down the back of the boat, well, the net's already been shot, so they're bringing it back in at the moment. And Reggie, our skipper, reckons that we've got a really good chance of catching some whiting our target species. It'll be a slow half hour or so as the Nafel trawls the same net at a stately 1.8 knots around the sandy seabed where the whiting regs after are known to feed. But the ocean is a big place with a lot of different animals living in it, so we already know there will be much more than whiting coming up in this first haul. I'm as excited as everyone else at the thought of what we'll see on the sorting tray. There's a giant jigsaw puzzle of different fish sizes, colours and species bundled up in this net. And although we're confident that the dominant colour will be the silver of school whiting, we know the pressure will be on to get all the different fish types sorted and sometimes discarded with minimum environmental damage. Oh yeah. Well, there she goes, comes over the side. Wow, look at that, we've got octopus, whiting, whole mixed bag of fish. And hopefully, plenty of whiting we can, uh, we can box up. Lots of different fish. These ones here, don't quite know what they are, but they've got like hooks on each side. Look at that, you actually can pick them up. Never seen them before. Really unusual, look at the beautiful tail on them. 
it straight over the side for him. A sustainable catch relies on fast, efficient sorting. So it's all hands on deck, including our chef Simon Tarlington and me. Well, loads of fish, Simon, eh? Just amazing the amount of species here. A hell of a lot of different ones. <laughs> you can see here, a couple of ockies. Wow. <laughs> We're going to get a full bucket of those for sure. There's so many other species, but on this drop, just a much bigger, bigger lot of whiting. So loads that size. The fish that we can't use with a catch like this, it's speed. You've got to get the guys all working fast. As you can see, they're working overtime, pushing off back into the water all the fish that we don't really need. But the majority of these fish are all going to be boxed up and sold back at the fish market. Everywhere you look, you're seeing something different. It's quite amazing. Here we go. That's sort of like a sand flathead. And uh, not too bad on size as well. Well, after putting the nets out, this is the first haul. Loads of whiting, plenty of them. There's probably about eight different crates of these guys. We've got heaps of crabs. They're an unusual crab. I haven't seen them before, but obviously they can get good money for the crabs as well. And then you've got a mixed bag of flathead as well as some octopus. And eventually, after a hard day's work of repeating all that trawling, hauling and sorting about a half dozen times, Simon and I have earned ourselves some downtime for the cruise back into Lake's entrance. The dock at the Fisherman's Co-op is a familiar sight by now, and unloading the boxes of all the different species we've caught is a familiar end-of-day task. It's a nervous time for Reg, as he waits to see how well his day's work has paid off. And I get another chance to see some fast professional filleting in action, this time with the flathead we've sorted. And with that, our day's fishing is done. Well, now it's Simon's turn to show us what he can create with these beautiful whiting fillets when we head back to Windsor in Melbourne, to the Railway Hotel, where he's got his award-winning restaurant, Highline. Windsor in Melbourne is a busy contrast to casual coastal lakes entrance. Here at the Railway Hotel is where I'm going, and in particular to its award-winning Highline restaurant, where Chef Simon Tarlington is going to turn our Eastern School Whiting catch into one of the exquisite gourmet dishes he's famous for. And he starts with almost surgical attention to detail. So it's to start the sauce, um, straight away we've got some dry sake. Okay. Uh, we'll get it straight into the pot. So we let it reduce by half. Okay. So now we're going to start cutting the vegetables. First off, we've got a carrot. We're going to need the veg cooking fast. Now we've got some ginger, just some nice slices of ginger. Uh, eschalots, about five of them in. So this adds a lot of flavour. Sauce isn't too strong. We like to keep it quite light so it doesn't overpower the fish. Next we've got some garlic. It doesn't have to be perfect, it is a sauce. Here we've got some spring onions, we'll just add that. So now we've got some hard herbs. So we've got some thyme, some bay leaves. You can start to smell it already. It's yeah, so the sake is starting to come through, you're getting a bit of that ginger smell. Mm, beautiful. Here we've got some Tasmanian wakame. It's a seaweed. A seaweed? Yep, so it's quite commonly used in Japanese cooking. This is the Australian variety. And then we've got some mushroom trims. These are all dried. Does a dried mushroom add a lot of flavour? Yeah, it adds a lot of earthy flavour. So everything together creates individual nice light flavours that will support the whiting. Won't overpower it. We still don't want to overpower the fish. It so will the, whiting, be the, the whiting's still the star. It still is the star of the dish. So here we got the fish stock. So we make it from red emperor bones. Well, red emperor is one of my favourite species to catch. We get them out on the barrier reef, but uh, right here, right now, that smells pretty good. With this sauce, we're not really going to need to add anything else to the fish stock due to all the aromats we've already got in the other pot and we'll just add it to the sauce. And so just simmer it nice and low? So just simmer it nice and low, and just get all the flavours out of the aromats, the seaweed, the mushrooms. You don't want to boil it, otherwise it'll lose all the fresh flavours coming out. This is a burnt butter. 
Uh, we're going to actually cook the fish in that today. So how much butter's in there? It's probably a kilo of butter. Okay. I put it in a really hot pot. Milk solids burn and it leaves a nice clarified fat. And here we've got the sauce that we've already prepared. Uh, it's strained, it's nice and clear. So all the flavours are in there now? Yeah, so all the flavours in there. I'll just have a taste of it. Okay. Wow, there's so many flavours in there. That's amazing. So do you simmer this or bring it to the boil? So we bring it to the boil. As soon as it comes up to the boil, we'll then add it to the fish. And we've undercooked the fish slightly, so by the time it comes out to the table, we'll have cooked the fish all the way through. Here we've got some fennel pollen. Fennel pollen? Yeah, so the flowers of uh, fennel. Depending on the fish, you've got to be careful how much we do put on it. Because mm -hmm. it is such a small fish, it will overpower it. Tiny bit of salt, not too much. Now ready to go? Now ready to go. So we'll take the fish over to the butter. This is sitting at exactly 60 degrees. Put the fillets in, skin side down. So we'll just leave them for about five minutes. We don't want to cook it all the way through. So it's just the sauce will finish it off just before it hits the table. Perfect. So these are ready to come out. They're looking good. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit under. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Put them straight on the towel. Just get rid of any excess butter. So here we've got the preserved mushrooms from winter. Wow, they're a lot of colour. Yeah, they are a lot of colour. So these are being hot pickled. Okay, marmalade. Marmalade. These are actually made for mandarins from the farm. Right. They were very, very tight. First thing that goes on the plate will be the fish. So put the fish skin side down. So next we add a few little dollops of the marmalade. Okay, so not much. Not much. Got to remember it is sweet. We don't want to overpower with marmalade. So now we'll add some of these Australian shiitakes just from the other way. All different textures. Every mouthful you'll get a slightly different flavour. So now we've got some fennel cream. So this is just fennel cooked down with a little bit of noily prey. Four or five dots around the fish. A few nice flowers. It's all about the presentation too, isn't it? Yeah, unique. they're all edible. They're unique all taste. got unique flavours. So we'll start off with the red elk. Uh, next, just a few coriander flowers. So these are quite strong? These are very strong. So quite an intense coriander flavour. It's good just to get that point where someone's eating a dish and just go, wow, what was that? Then we got it's nice little mustard flowers, makes the dish pop, but it also looks good. So the last little bit, we add a bit of the sauce to it. So that's that nice mushroom broth. Not too much. Just remember it is cooking through the rest of the fish. And here we go, school whiting, marmalade, some preserved mushrooms, and nice foraged herbs. Wow, this looks amazing. Do we get a chance to eat it? Yeah. <laughs> get into it, Andrew. Fantastic, look at that, wow. Not a bad chef. <laughs> so join me next week when I head off on another seafood escape.